Deep Blue by David Neal Wilson Performed by Chris Patton 1. The Fool The lights flickered on. The stage, moments before a dark world of surreal sound and cord-soaked images, became a snarl of patched cables, scuffed speaker cabinets, and half-assembled equipment. No one spoke to Brant as he passed, white makeup blurred with dark lines from the black that lined his eyes and lips, a melting harlequin image of angst and insecurity. He had his guitar case in one hand, and his escort for the night, Jose Cuervo, clutched tightly in the other. The doors would close in thirty minutes. No leeway. Sid paid well enough, and he did right by the band, but at closing time he wanted everyone and everything out the door. One of the waitresses, Katrina, let Brandt out the door, leaning to whisper as her enamel-tipped fingers worked the ponderous deadbolt. You look like a fucking dead clown. Brandt brushed past her, his shoulders sliding against her breast as he slipped into the night and turned down the road toward his apartment. He walked away slowly, not even thinking about looking for his car. No way was he driving. The guitar case slapped comfortably against his leg as he walked, taking his mind off the last set. Too much tequila, too much apathy. Summed up in two words. Too much. He'd forgotten the words to a song he'd written himself, repeated the previous verse and mixed that up with the chorus. No one had noticed. He thought maybe Shaver had caught it, just before launching into the solo, but he couldn't be sure. The audience didn't give a fuck what they played. Shaver only lived for the solo. Hard facts, but true. Brant thought about that for a long moment. He tipped the tequila bottle up, took a slug, and capped it again, moving off down the street. Fuck them, he said out loud. Fuck them all. The streets were empty. The soft glow of street lamps pooled on the deserted roads, making each intersection a glowing oasis, and Brant walked from one to the next, the tequila forgotten, words and music swimming through his mind. He hated nights like this. He hated the empty, nothing feeling of leaving a bar after a show where no one, not even the band, had cared. Nothing. Empty. He hated being alone and drunk. He hated the thought of his cave-like, nowhere apartment with the fading paint on the walls and electricity that only worked half the time. It reminded him too much of his father's home and his father's life. It reminded him that no matter how many dreams he'd had, he was living in the image of his creator, minus the beer gut and the attitude. His last private moment with a woman had been the landlady screaming about rent he wouldn't earn at all unless the nights got better than this one. More of the family scrapbook tossed in his face as the old bitch's features had melted to his mother's, the voice growing yet another octave more shrill, piercing his heart and his gut. Different voice, same message. Loser. Nobody. No future. Another swig of tequila, and he turned the corner to his block. His building was one of many. Too many. All the same, layer upon layer of box apartments with doors only different because they bore separate numbers. Tiny worlds, each bleak and lonely, cut off from the others by walls too thin to block sound and too crumbled to hold paintings or coat hooks. Brant stumbled up the stairs, nearly fell, then recovered his balance just in time to keep from banging the guitar case on the dirty steps. The tequila bottle struck concrete with a loud clink and he cursed. Lurching up the final three steps, he leaned into the door and reached into his pocket for his keys. Nothing. He patted the tight denim, cursed, and shifted, letting the guitar come to rest at his feet and trading the Cuervo to his opposite hand. The other pocket was empty as well. Fuck, he said, leaning hard into the door, his head cracking painfully into the wood and leaving a dirty white smudge. He leaned there. Eyes closed tightly, blinking against the sudden attack of vertigo that assaulted his senses. The car. The keys had to be in the fucking car that he was too fucking drunk to drive or even find. No keys, no door, 
and he wasn't about to wake that old bitch and tell her. She'd leave him on the street. She was ready to put him there anyway. Brant leaned for a moment longer, breathing slowly. Sometime in the soft void of that moment, sometime between thought and darkness and thought again, the sound started. It was hypnotic, dragging at his heart first and tugging his ears into service for the translation. Music. It was the crisp, clear voice of a harmonica floating to him through the stillness of the late-night streets. He listened, then pushed off from the wall, trying to orient himself. Shaking his head, he considered taking another swig of tequila, thought better of it, and turned. He couldn't get in, and he couldn't stay on the stairs either. Might as well find out where that music was coming from. Brant hit the street once more, turning the opposite of the way he'd come. The music seeped out from the darker depths of the city. Not safe there, he knew. Not safe walking back for his car and chancing his alcohol-soaked mind to the streets or the police, either. He stumbled ahead, letting the music lead him and blanking out everything else. It was beautiful, but sad beyond anything he could remember hearing or experiencing. Tears welled in the corners of his eyes and he brushed at them, smacking himself painfully in the head with a tequila bottle and cursing softly. He didn't recognize the tune, but it was blues, pure and sweet. Blues so soul-deep that the voice of the instrument spoke in the place of a man's lips. The way it was supposed to be. The way he wanted to feel when he played. The way he felt when he kicked back, closed his eyes, and listened to T-Bone Walker, or Robert Johnson, or Billie Holiday. The way the blues had not been played in so long, they seemed banished to some fantasy realm that never was, the recording's elaborate hoaxes mocking him with things beyond his reach. Hot tears welled suddenly in the corners of his eyes. He ignored them. He knew they would run down, trickling trails through his ruined makeup, but he didn't care. Brant hummed the melody, trying to commit it to memory. He knew the classics. He knew the old masters. He did not know this song. It was intricate, dripping with simplicity that was belied by quarter tones and shivering trills of sound that walked the tightrope between notes, hinted of notes that were missing between the C sharps and D minors. Ahead an alley opened to his left. He knew the place. It had once been a packing dock for a shipping company long since gone to ruin. Brant stopped. He did not want to think about that alley, had thought far too much about it already. A shiver transited his spine and he blinked once, unscrewing the lid of the tequila bottle and taking a long swallow. The homeless gathered in that alley. He saw the flicker of trash can firelight winking and shimmering from the darkened entrance. The music drew him, but his fears held him back. Stalemate. Brant could see himself in that alley. He could see the downward spiral of his life spinning him into it like a giant drain. As he slowly screwed the lid onto the tequila, he noticed for the first time that there was a huddled figure seated at the entrance. He tried to pierce the gloom and make out details, but he was still too far away, nearly a block. Breathing deeply, he stepped forward again, gripping both guitar and tequila as if they were talismans of protection. It was a woman old and cloaked in layer upon layer of tattered clothing. Spread out on the ground before her was a semicircle of cards. Tarot. Brant knew little of the brightly colored images, but he'd seen them often enough to know what they were. As he entered the mouth of the alley, he glanced down, and she suddenly raised her gaze to hold his, trapping him in the depths of the yellowed, roomy eyes. The music was louder now, captivating, the tune had changed, sweeping up and down minor scales, each note lingering, blurring into the next. The woman did not speak, but held out the deck to Brant, her mouth opening slowly in a toothless grin. He stared at her for a long time, not noticing the cards. He stared until he realized what he was doing.